and welcome to my presentation. I'm Leonidas Kosmidis, senior researcher at the Barcelona Supercomputing Center and member of the faculty at the Polytechnic University of Catalonia. Christmas is around the corner, so I thought that you would be interested to hear a Christmas story about uh, an elf and software normalization. This is the contents of my presentation. We are going to start with an introduction. We will discuss uh, what is uh, software randomization and how it can be implemented. Then we will explain the details of the ELF binary format. And uh, we will demonstrate uh, our method on a RISC-V platform, in particular NOEL-5, with custom RISC-V instructions like the Sparrow AI Accelerator that we have developed in our group. And uh, finally, we will conclude this uh, presentation. Let's start with explaining uh, what software randomization is. Software randomization is a method that changes randomly a program without modifying the way that it behaves. For example, it changes only its memory layout. There are multiple ways why we need, uh, multiple reasons why we would like to do so. For example, we might want to include some uh, desired timing uh, properties in the software in order to be able to compute worst case execution time through probabilistic timing analysis methods for real time systems. Another reason is that uh, we would like uh, to isolate the effect of platform jitter in order to perform uh, performance evaluation. And uh, also we can use it in order to increase uh, the system security. Most of security attacks exploit knowledge about the timing and the program layout. So if we modify the memory layout, then we can increase our defense against these uh, attacks. In this presentation, we focus on static software randomization. The basic idea, the basic idea behind uh, this method is that uh, before program execution, we create a binary with a different random binary layout. As you can see on the bottom of uh, this slide, the binary layout directly affects the memory layout because the binary is loaded at the memory before the program execution. Also, the exact position in memory affects how things are mapped inside the cache. And uh, this creates different uh, conflicts between the different elements of the program. Different conflicts result in different amount of cache misses, which later translate to different execution times. And uh, as you can see, if we modify the binary, then we modify the memory layout and subsequently also the cache map and the execution time. Now we focus on uh, a variant of static software randomization, which, which is applied at source code level. We term this TASA, which stands for Toolchain Agnostic Static Software Randomization. TASA relies on a very simple observation that uh, compilers generate program elements in the same order that they encounter them inside uh, a source file. So if we modify the order inside the source file, this will modify also the way that things are mapped inside the executable. But before going uh, to more details, let's explain the ELF binary executable format. This is the most used uh, binary format and is used uh, from bare metal embedded systems up to full Linux uh, distributions. The ELF binary consists mainly of four sections, the dot .text, dot .read only data, dot .data, and dot .bss. These sections are loaded in the memory before the program uh, startup, and uh, the entries inside them need to be aligned to their size. The first two sections are the text and uh, read-only data. Text contains uh, code, and uh, read-only data contains uh, the global variables, which are uh, constant. So, like uh, strings or uh, uh, constants. And uh, they are placed uh, one next to the other because uh, in uh, operating systems, we can protect uh, both of them to make them uh, read-only. Next, we have the data segment in which we put uh, 
global variables which are uh, initialized with a value other than zero. And in VSS, we put uh, variables that are either non-initialized or are initialized in zero. And uh, the VSS segment is uh, initialized at zero with program start. Now let's see how code randomization is uh, implement, implemented. The idea is very simple. We can uh, just uh, reorder functions. In addition to this, in order to increase the amount of memory layouts, we can uh, introduce also randomly sized uh, padding using uh, NOP, uh, NOPS uh, instructions. Here on the left, we have the original code and how it's uh, mapped inside the binary. And on the right, we can see the modified uh, version, the software randomized one, and uh, the binary uh, layout that it produced. Notice that uh, because we order functions, uh, if we want to reorder them uh, freely, we have to introduce uh, prototypes. And uh, the ASM instructions uh, are the NOP instructions are included uh, as uh, assembly inline instructions. And uh, we can have a random number of uh, them in order to increase uh, the size. They are also uh, introduced after the return value of the, uh, of the function so that uh, they are never uh, executed, they don't have any functional uh, impact. We can see that in this way, we can uh, change the order, the size, and the placement of uh, uh, the functions inside the executable. And uh, also, the entire size of the text uh, segment is uh, changed, which can have a cascade effect on the rest of the segments, because uh, each segment is uh, placed one after the other. Now let's talk about uh, the stack frame randomization. The size of each stack frame depends on the number of variables and their, uh, the number of local variables and uh, their uh, size. Also, the compiler introduces its own uh, alignment padding before, because as we said, each variable needs to be aligned according to its uh, size. And this includes also the entire stack frame and the stack uh, frame point. In TASA, we are using uh, two complementary solutions. We have interstack randomization and intrastack randomization. In interstack randomization, we artificially increase the stack frame size by a random uh, amount. And uh, in this way, we randomize conflicts between uh, different uh, stack frames. For the intrastack randomization, we reorder the variables inside the function and uh, this changes the conflicts between uh, local variables inside the same uh, function. Here we can see visually how this uh, can be done. Again on the left we have the original uh, version of the code and on the right the uh, software randomized one and on the right side of this uh, slide we can see the stack frame uh, layout before and uh, after uh, randomization. With uh, the blue shading, we saw the compiler introduced uh, alignment padding. As we can see, we uh, for uh, interstack randomization, we add a randomly sized uh, unused array, which changes uh, the size of the stack frame of this uh, function. And uh, for intrastack randomization, we shuffle uh, locals. But uh, as we said, uh, because the compiler uh, tries to preserve uh, the alignment of its uh, variable, depending on the order, we can have uh, different uh, introduced uh, padding, which also can change the size of the uh, stack frame. And uh, similar to the previous case, this can have a cascade effect to the next uh, function calls. Now in terms of uh, global data randomization, the concept is the same, but it's uh, we have uh, a slight uh, difference. Recall that uh, 
Global uh, variables are placed in different segments depending on whether they are read-only and uh, whether they are initialized and uh, if this uh, initialization value is uh, zero or not. So they end up in three different uh, segments in the read-only data, in the data, and in the BSS. So in order to uh, randomization to be effective, TASA, the first thing uh, it does is uh, to separate uh, its global variable to the segment that uh, it goes, and uh, after that, uh, reorders the variables within its uh, segment, so that we make sure that uh, the reordering in the end is uh, has an impact in the final uh, layout. The way that uh, TASA is implemented is uh, within uh, uh, the SIL source to source compiler, which supports any C construct, including uh, GCC extension. And uh, it's uh, available as open source from the BSC GitLab in uh, this link. All the files are first uh, pre processed with the C preprocessor, and then they are linked together in a large uh, C file. This file next is uh, uh, randomized and generates another uh, C file, which can be compiled uh, with uh, any C compiler, like GCC, LLVM, or uh, your custom uh, compiler, in order to generate an ELF binary. We have demonstrated uh, our method in a RISC-V processor with uh, custom extensions. In particular, we have used uh, NOEL-5 from uh, Cobham Geisler, which we implemented in a Xilinx Ultrascale Plus uh, FPGA. Since this uh, processor is uh, fully configurable, we have selected the minimal configuration, which is a microcontroller-like uh, configuration, and uh, we have uh, enabled a two-way instruction and data cache. We have also produced a second version of this uh, processor, which is integrated uh, together with uh, our Spark uh, low-cost SOAR vector uh, AI accelerator that we have developed in our uh, group and uh, provides uh, custom RISC V uh, processor uh, instructions uh, for AI processing. In terms of software, we have uh, implemented uh, matrix multiplication, which is a commonly used uh, kernel in um, uh, deep learning. And we have implemented it in uh, C for the scalar version of the processor and uh, using inline assembly, uh, Sparrow instructions that you can see on the right for the, ver for the version that uses our uh, accelerator. Here we can see the results. On the left, we can see the results uh, with uh, randomization and without randomization on the scalar version of the processor. And uh, on the right, we can see the same results but in the version of the processor that uh, is integrated with uh, our accelerator. Now let's focus uh, here on the left. With blue, we have a histogram of the execution times uh, without randomization. We can see that even without randomization, still we have execution time uh, variability, uh, mainly because of the DRAM controller. But we can see that this variability is uh, very short. While uh, when we enable uh, randomization, this execution time variability becomes uh, bigger. So we can have uh, some execution times that uh, are faster and uh, also some uh, few that are uh, slower. The same thing happens uh, on the right with uh, our accelerator. Again, without randomization, the variability is short and with randomization, it's uh, much bigger. It is uh, actually worth to note that uh, here we have uh, used uh, 10 bins, but uh, actually the execution times that we get uh, with uh, randomization uh, are much more than uh, 10, which uh, indicate uh, how much uh, variability we can get with uh, uh, software randomization. As a future work, uh, soon we are going to start a, a new project funded by the European Space Agency in which we will implement uh, TASA in the LLVM uh, compiler infrastructure. In order to enable software randomization to be applied not only in C, as we have demonstrated, but also for C++ programs and other C++ uh, parallel programming models for uh, accelerators.
To conclude this presentation, uh, we have seen uh, how the ALF binary format uh, is uh, structured. We have also explained uh, what is static software normalization, and how it can be implemented at source code level. And uh, we have seen that it's uh, portable across any C compiler, even when uh, custom RISC-V instructions are uh, used. This uh, work has been funded by the up-to-date uh, uh, Horizon 2020 project. And uh, with this, uh, I conclude my presentation. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. And I will be happy to answer your questions either live or uh, through email. Thank you very much.